In this tutorial, I have taken 93, I guess, uh, of my own photos that I'm seeing here in the bottom of my event. So at the bottom of the event, it'll tell you how many uh, images were taken or are placed, and you can select that range, and it'll also tell you how many of them are selected. So if you select a range of photos or of media, it'll tell you how much is actually selected in the bottom left-hand corner of your actual event. So in this case, I got a stop motion event. All my photos are imported. I also have created a stop motion project at the very top here that I'm going to begin editing at the bottom. First thing I do when I go to edit this, I'm gonna hold the down arrow. And if you have this in list view, uh, as opposed to the thumbnail view, if I just hold the down arrow, I can see how this thing's gonna play through at a reasonable pace. But one thing that I noticed before I even import any photos and have to go through and track this down, I can see that I have this, actually I was laying out where this next blue portion of my marker going through my stop motion text, uh, I accidentally leaned on the, the shutter release uh, remote and I accidentally took a picture of my hand and of the ruler here that I was using to lay out my next step. So I can delete this, I know I don't need it at all. So I right clicked on it and deleted that uh, image 160. And if I come back down through here, I can see my marker progresses through and then the markers put themselves away. So that's my entire project, pretty simple. But what I wanna do is show you how this, uh, some of the stuff that's gonna pop up for, for you in Final Cut Pro. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click the first one, shift click the last one. You could command A this. And then I like to grab the very first image and bring it down to my timeline. When you let this go, you should have a pop-up window ask you, what is your effective, what, what frame rate do you want to be working with here? I believe that at 29.97, well, that's, that's the standard we're going to work with in other video projects. This is also the standard we're going to, I typically recommend we use. Uh, you could jump this up to 59.94. Uh, this is the other standard that I would recommend for broadcast uh, if we were later going to play this somewhere else. And this should all remain 1080p, full HD. You got plenty of resolution in each of your photographs. Then I'll click OK. This gets dropped down into your library. By default, each photo will be on this screen for 10 seconds, which is obviously way too long. And other thing you should notice is that there's obviously black bars because photographs are very rarely shot and taken shot at a 16.9 uh, aspect ratio. So they're not long and wide enough typically. So if that's the case, I'm going to hit Control D and I'm going to shorten these things down. I'm going to say, let's make them three frames long as a good place to start. So Control D with all the clips selected has shortened the duration from 10 seconds a piece to three frames a piece, which is much, much faster. Shift Z is a good way to zoom in. The other way to zoom in and out on your uh, project window here is Command plus or minus on your keyboard. That's a quick keyboard shortcut. You can also zoom in and out in the bottom right hand corner, it'll allow you to zoom in and out on your project so you can see which photos you're actually dealing with. In this case, I hit Shift Z, so my photos will fill up the majority of the window at the bottom. That's just a good, good way to fill the, the project window. If I hit the space bar, you'll see the pace at which this plays. Uh, I could probably play this a little bit faster if I decided to. And I'm going to do that. So I'm going to speed this up to, let's see how fast one frame a piece goes, and it gets much shorter. It's go very quickly and so I can play games here with uh, the entire duration of this project and the speed at which each of these photos plays so on this portion here at the end where the markers are putting themselves away I'm gonna hit control D once again I'm gonna slow it down I'm gonna put it back to three frames I think that goes a little bit too quickly whoops All right, there we go. So I think I got them all. Control D, three, enter. And you'll see that those pictures at the end just play a little bit more slowly as the markers put themselves away. If there's anywhere in the middle here, I can select and uh, speed up, slow down uh, as I see fit. I think this portion in the middle with the blue marker should actually be played a little bit slower. So I'm gonna grab that middle portion I'm going to hit Control D, and I'm going to hit 2. So my fastest, where my pictures are the most dense, I'm going to play them at one frame per second. That red marker moves pretty quickly. 
but I feel like the blue marker moves at a similar pace when it comes across as well. So I kind of like the, the speed, even though that the frame rate, the effective frame rate is different for these three portions. So that's something you have to play around with, uh, the retiming of the, the portions of your photos. How long do you want each photo to be on, on camera or on in your scene? That's the thing you got to play around with with the retiming portion. Moving on from there, I have this thing retimed. I kind of like the way this, this progresses. I don't have any audio in here yet. That'll be the second portion of this video. I want to fill the entire window. So what I can do is I select the entire thing and I right click to make a new compound clip. This will just be titled whatever your project's titled. And what it does is it mashes these all together so they can be treated as a video file, uh, or at least it looks like a single video file uh, as all of these are contained into one clean package. If you do it this way, you don't have to crop each of your photos. What we do is select this group and in the bottom left hand corner of your viewer window, or by hitting shift C, you can open up this trim crop Ken Burns uh, space. We want to crop our, our little video file or this compound clip. And when we click crop, it allows us to grab the blue corners and to bring this in tighter to our project and to fill our window. So I'm gonna try and crop this down much tighter. The window should be constrained to 16 by nine because it's gonna fill the 16 by nine window when you crop. And what I wanna do is just make sure that I can see everything that I'm after. And in this case, putting itself away and sliding off, uh, that all works. So the part that I'm gonna crop here, I'm gonna leave this a little bit bigger. Before I click done in the upper right hand corner of this window. Now you'll notice there's no black bars on either side. Uh, this will take a moment to render because it's changing the aspect ratio and it's zooming in on your photo actually. So it takes a second that orange bar across the top should render and disappear pretty quickly. And now when I play it back, it's full screen and my story is being told nice and quickly. Uh, in the second portion of this, we'll add some sound effects. <laughs> 